Michael, one of the deep questions about consciousness uh, asks, why did it happen? Uh, it just seems like such an odd thing in the universe yeah. to have inner experience. Yeah. So use the word awareness. Uh, we have to have an explanation for that yeah. in order to explain consciousness. Can your theory help us? Yeah, I, th I think I think it uh, it can. First of all, I would say that con consciousness, awareness, these are biological phenomena, and the underlying theory of biology is evolution, and we we could look to evolution. You know, I would say. First of all, the, the, the theory that we're working on is this notion that uh, awareness is the brain's way of describing to itself what it means to pay attention to something. So when did attention evolve? And then when did the need evolve to uh, understand one's own attention and, and, and describe one's own attention to oneself. And, and what were the utilities, the yes, benefits what, exactly. of, of that at each stage, either exactly, on a group basis exactly. or individual basis? Exactly. You know, uh, the evolution of attention is a very interesting topic. Uh, so if you look at the animal kingdom, hydras don't seem to have anything like attention. Uh, they have nothing like a selecting a signal over other signals. Yeah, yeah. And hydras are thought to, it's not quite clear, but maybe emerged 600 million years ago, something like that, splitting off of other animals. But most animals that we know of, insects and vertebrates and so on, have basically some kind of attentional mechanism, some ability to focus on some signals at the exclusion of others. Uh, and, and these animals all diverged uh, starting around 500, 550 million years ago. So it's now, that what, time frame that... To make it uh, yeah. clear, what, what is the um, evolutionary benefit of being able to focus attention? Right. So uh, attention uh, arose because uh, an animal receives so much uh, signal, so many signals and, and stimulation that you know, you can't deal with them all. You focus on some at the expense of others. And you see that kind of strategy in almost every animal you can think of, except for the most primitive ones. I mean, sponges, no. <laughs> uh, uh, hydras, no. But uh, insects, sure. Uh, and so this is very useful. It's very fundamental to any kind of organized, complicated nervous system. So you have attention. But now you need to control attention. It's not good enough just to have it. You need to be able to control where you're focusing it. And to control something, it's mighty useful to have some kind of model or self-description of the thing you're controlling. And so I would think right from the beginning, uh, you know, half a billion years ago, there are control mechanisms emerging. Uh, and those control mechanisms involve essentially a brain being able to tell itself, I am aware of something. And uh, that's its way of keeping track of what it's attending to. It's its own kind of sketchy way or cartoon description of paying attention to something. Assuming your theory to be correct, yeah. you would have to say that awareness, uh, some people would say consciousness, but use awareness, yeah. is existent in the entire, virtually the entire uh, animal kingdom. Yeah, I mean, I think that it has changed enormously, and it is probably very different in its uh, quirky details in many different species. I think what an insect has may be at a, at a level we wouldn't want to recognize as awareness, but it has the rudiments of it. It's almost like saying, does a fish have hands? No, but a fish has fins, and our hands are modified fins, and so the precursor of it is there already quite early. Uh, and there's no step function difference. There's that no. You, you, you have a gradient. Gradual. Exactly. Very, very gradual. You know, uh, um, one aspect of the theory that we can use this kind of mechanism for self-modeling to model other people as well, this social use of attention. Uh, lots of animals show that too. I mean, birds and mammals show that. Their common ancestor is about 300 350 million years ago. So very early in evolution, these things are probably coming in and then growing in sophistication. Uh, and of course, in humans, uh, we have enormously expanded brains and all these mechanisms become much more quirky and interesting and, 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 and complicated. And some would say mysterious, but you say not mysterious. No, I don't think there's much. I mean, there, there's mystery in the sense that there's things that are not known, of course. Sure. Uh, but they're, um, I think, fundamentally un un knowable, understandable from a scientific point of view, yeah.